We just left my parents' house in San Diego. Uh, I think the road trip's actually gonna start. Ah! Uh, okay. Oscar, don't okay. do that. Oh my. Hello and welcome back. My name is Oscar, this is Alexa, and we're on a road trip all over the country, having conversations with people about life's big questions. Today, it's happiness, self-acceptance, and other trivial first world problems. Identity. Let's get into it. So last time we talked about loving yourself. But to do that, you gotta be cool with everything about yourself. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And this is something easier said than done. That was easy. I mean, does it just take time and come with age? Or is it something we could be working on? Cause look, I'm a pretty introverted person. For the most part, I'm pretty quiet in social settings. And I hate that. I wanna be that person we all know who is totally extroverted, cracking all the jokes and constantly voicing his or her opinion. And they're not always funny or right, but they don't care, and that's the point. They throw it out there without any hesitation and that's what makes them awesome. But then wishing to be like someone else feels wrong. I mean, am I supposed to work out being the person I wish I was or accept and embrace the person I already am? And doing that is tricky when I feel like happiness is conditional, that I'll be happy once I have this or that. You know, I'll be good in a few years when I'm smarter, more successful, more friends, whatever. I'm not proud of it, but it's the truth. And as I'm saying this, I'm realizing I sound like a crazy person. All this caring what others think, wanting to be liked, validated, and perceived a certain way. I feel like some narcissist who thinks everyone sits around thinking about him. And that's crazy. I'm crazy. Wait, am I cured? Am I totally good now because I've recognized all this? Yeah, I think I am. Not. And this is what's confusing about this stuff. That you have moments when you feel like you suck and the world sucks and it's all total <laughs> But then sometimes you feel great and think, wow, life is good not realizing that it'll be happening again by this time next week. See the problem? So how can we feel good most all the time? That's what I'm trying to get. And as it turns out, a lot of people could relate to this. That's a great question to start with. Not the easiest in the world to answer. I'm 43 years old, and I still struggle. Every day. <laughs> I still do. I used to doubt myself a lot, because I felt kind of lost in my 20s, especially my early 20s. But on the outside, like, everything looks all good. You sound a lot like me. I think we all lie when we say we don't care what people say, but man, I sure used to care about that a lot more than I do today. I still find myself asking, like, am I doing this thing because I want to do it or because I think that other people would perceive it a certain way. So they say at uh, 20 you care a lot about what people think about you, and at 40 you don't care about what people think about you, and at 60 you realize they don't think about you at all. <laughs> that voice was Dan. We found him on a bench in front of the ocean. There's no video because I actually deleted the file. Anyway, what he says here pretty much encapsulates the response that we got from a lot of people, which is that with age and time you care less and less. But if that's the case, what about the people my age and younger who seem to leap over that whole thing? I don't know, I feel like some people are born with it. Don't you feel like there were kids in elementary school and junior high and high school that just had that swagger and they're just like, Shh, I'm good? Some people figure it out real early. I would say most of us don't. You know, it's just something we gotta work at every day. Some of us gotta really struggle. I think underneath caring how others see us is this wanting to be liked and accepted. But this sort of puts you in a box. For example, oftentimes, especially in social settings, I find myself not saying or doing what my immediate instinct is. And this is because the second thought that comes in my mind is, wait, what if that sounds dumb? What if it's not funny? That would be so embarrassing. Yep, I'll just stay quiet. And then I'm just the awkward one who's just there. Because sometimes, like, you walk in a room and see all these people and you're like, you know, holy shit, <laughs> you know? I'm not gonna be the life of the party here. I'm gonna kind of watch from over here in the corner and talk to people I know and... For the most part, I keep a small circle, I'm very introverted, so I talk deep into people, I don't talk across. So when I go to a party, I just talk to the person I came with, usually. That was Ruben. We met him through a mutual friend and he let us crash on his couch for a few days. And hearing him talk about how he is at parties was like, holy crap, that's like me. I mean, I, I get so frustrated with myself for being this way at things. So it was this understanding that this is just a character trait, not a flaw. And not something I need to try and fix or change, but just realize that I'll never be the life of the party guy. Because it's simply not who I am. But you gotta realize, most of the time everybody's thinking the same thing too. And even if they're, you know, they, uh, like, you know, we're all the same. And, and once you kind of have that mentality in the back of your head, and you realize it doesn't really matter, People really rely on altering themselves because they're not comfortable with being in wherever they are. Oh, if I was different this way, then everyone would like me more. Really what you're saying is, I don't like me. And this is a tricky thing. 
because there can be so many layers from physical to status to where we are in life. But I think for me, it comes from being really hard on myself. I focus in on the negatives and the parts I don't like, which in turn makes me look at others that way. I think some people too are just so unforgiving of other people and themselves. If you look at the world and you look at people, we all have faults. Now I try to put myself in someone else's shoes to understand their position so I can understand the decision. And I always try to remind myself that um, the best thing I can do for them is to be loving and kind. So I've been trying to do just that, mainly because I know it's what we should do anyway and it's just normal human decency stuff, but also because maybe I'll start looking at myself that way. But even still, it all goes back to time. I'm not old enough or mature enough to really get a handle on this, which is a frustrating thought because then there's this constant feeling of being incomplete. You go through those phases, you know, so you just roll with it and then eventually you, you get to, you get through it. I think in a lot of ways that's how like your character is built, you know, it's not built in a moment, it's kind of built over time. There's always going to be more. And if you're looking for the best of something, you're never going to achieve it. You can't achieve it because there'll always be a better. Uh, I think it's been about five years ago, I was looking through some old wedding pictures. and. I, I kind of looked at the pictures and I said, man, I wish I could be skinny like I was back then. And it kind of hit me that, you know, even then I thought I wasn't skinny. I thought I was fat. And this was like, <laughs> it was such a simple way of putting it that made me see how dumb it was to think that happiness is something that will come in time as I get wrinkly. But what it's really about is right now. To be happy and content with who we are, where we are, and what we have today. And this doesn't mean we stop working on bettering ourselves or our lives, but just that sometimes we're not going to be as tall as we wanted to be, as funny or fit, successful, or have as many friends, and realizing that that's not what's going to bring the feeling of contentment we're missing, but that being happy right now, in this very moment, is what it's all about. Today is a moment. You know, it doesn't have to be fireworks. There's no winning life. So if you have a good Sunday afternoon with a couple friends, you do win. <laughs> that is the best, okay? But always be true and honest with yourself. You know, life's too short to worry about things like being bashful or, or you know. <laughs> Your true friends and everything accept you for who you are and appreciate you for who you are. Like looking back, it's when you like don't let those distractions take you over. You're like, yeah, this is who I am. The only thing that you have that you own is your self-confidence. The mere fact that you had the self-confidence to come up, approach me and talk to me today, don't ever let anybody take that away from you. When the road trip ended, I thought, dang, I don't feel like a changed person. But as I started going through all the conversations we had, it hit me, like, whoa, we went up to a lot of random people and opened up to them. And now I'm opening up to you, something I'd have never done before for fear of being judged or looked at funny. And it's not until right now that I'm realizing that this whole thing has been an exercise in confidence and self-acceptance. So that's pretty cool. I mean, it all goes back to what I talked about with love. Being happy is a choice. And I realize that it's a process, that there'll always be ups and downs. But right now, I feel pretty good. I feel very fortunate to live a, a full, good life, and it has its bumps, but it's a good life. Hey guys, thanks for watching. So what makes you happy? Let us know in the comments below. In the comments below. 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 Super cake.